Next presentation, portal vein thrombosis following a splenectomy is related to pathology, not surgical technique. The presenter is Matthew Mayer. Good afternoon. My name is Matthew Major, and I'd first like to thank the SAGES Committee for allowing us the opportunity to present our study today. Our study is titled Portal Vein Thrombosis Following Splenectomy is Related to Pathology and Not Surgical Technique. Here are our disclosures. Portal vein thrombosis is a serious complication after splenectomy. While it's rare in the general population, the observed incidence is higher after splenectomy with approximately 15% of symptomatic and up to 50% of asymptomatic patients. Risk factors include portal hypertension, malignancy, uh, splenomegaly, and myelodysplastic disorders. The link to surgical technique has remained controversial as some studies report a higher incidence in laparoscopic surgery uh, compared to open, and there are a few reports of portal vein thrombosis after hand-assisted laparoscopic splenectomy. The aim of our study was to document and compare the incidence of symptomatic portal venous thrombosis following different surgical techniques. We performed a retrospective analysis of a claims database for patients who underwent splenectomy at Indiana University uh, over a 13-year period. We excluded patients uh, who had splenectomy due to trauma and portal hypertension. Due to the impact of initial pneumoperitoneum, uh, conversions from laparoscopic to open were considered as laparoscopic. Evaluation for portal vein thrombosis was based on patient symptoms and was diagnosed with a contrasted CT scan. Uh, the table shows our demographic data. There were 165 total patients, 101 undergoing lap spleen, 20 hand assist, and 44 open. There were statistically more women who underwent lap spleen, and there was higher incidence of malignant diagnoses in the hand assist and open groups. There were eight conversions from laparoscopic to open and one conversion from lap to hand assist to open. The most common reason for conversion was difficulty manipulating a large spleen. The table here shows a comparison of the operative and post-operative outcomes between the three groups. Splenic size, weight, blood loss, and length of stay were statistically different between these groups. 60 patients had a post-operative CT scan uh, for symptoms concerning of an intra-abdominal process, and 11 of these patients uh, were diagnosed with a portal venous thrombosis. Patients in the hand assist and open groups had a clinically higher incidence of portal vein thrombosis, um, and these patients also had a higher number of malignant diagnosis and larger spleens. Of the patients with portal venous clots, five had a known diagnosis of malignancy. Seven patients were female, and these patients also um, were seen to have clinically larger spleens. There were two deaths in our cohort, neither of which were related to portal venous thrombosis. We then compared each subgroup with a two-sided t-test. Those results showed that laparoscopic splenectomy had less blood loss and length of stay when compared to open. The hand assist procedure was equivalent to uh, lap spleen and open spleen in terms of uh, blood loss, operative time, and length of stay. There was no difference in the pre or post-operative platelet counts between the groups, and the hand assist and open groups were involved in the removal of statistically larger spleens uh, when compared to lap spleen as well as having a higher incidence of malignant diagnosis. These uh, observations mimic the higher observed incidence of portal venous thrombosis in these groups. When lap spleen and the hand assist procedure were pooled together and compared to open splenectomy, there was no difference in the incidence of portal venous thrombosis. Lastly, a multivariate logistic regression confirmed that portal venous thrombosis formation was not dependent on surgical technique and we did not uh, identify any other statistically significant variables. There were several limitations to our study. One, it was retrospective and thus subject to a certain bias. The true incidence of portal vein thrombosis was not characterized as only symptomatic patients underwent postoperative imaging. Surgeon preference was noted to change over time to favor the hand assist and open procedures for patients with splenomegaly and we observed few patients with splenomegaly who successfully underwent laparoscopic splenectomy. Uh, and given that uh, malignancy and myelodysplastic disease often result in splenomegaly and are known risk factors for the development of portal venous clots, uh, patient pathology could be considered a confounding variable in our study. In conclusion, minimally invasive splenectomy does not predis uh, predispose patients to portal vein thrombosis. It appears that pathology is important in the formation of portal vein thrombosis after splenectomy, 
and without this additional risk, laparoscopic and hand-assisted laparoscopic splenectomy preserve the benefits of minimally invasive surgery in patients with normal and large size spleens. Thank you. Thank you. Question? I actually have a, a few questions um, coming at you pretty quickly here, uh, Dr. Major. Um, what, what was the, uh, did you track the, the timing or the post-operative day that you had the portal venous thromboses? And uh, what do you typically prophylax for these individuals? And how do you treat them post-operatively, particularly with uh, length of treatment? And then finally, have you gone back on any of these folks and actually looked at um, either splenic vein diameter, uh, at least we've seen a, a high correlation with portal vein thromboses uh, or portal venous uh, thromboses with uh, 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 splenic vein size. Thank you. Um, referring to the question about when the uh, patients were diagnosed, um, most were diagnosed within seven to 10 days postoperatively. Um, I believe the furthest from diagnosis was two months. Um, as far as uh, prophylactic anticoagulation, all the patients received standard um, uh, prophylactics, uh, prophylactics po uh, postoperatively. Uh, and uh, those patients who were diagnosed with portal vein clots were treated with therapeutic anticoagulation um, with uh, Lovenox or heparin uh, bridging to warfarin, uh, typically a duration of three to six months, I believe. Um, and the last question about uh, splenic vein diameter. Um, while uh, we did uh, look at that, uh, however, we decided not to include it as the majority of patients did not uh, undergo postoperative imaging. Um, we did see a correlation of having of um, patients with a larger splenic vein diameter as having um, um, more um, portal vein thrombosis, possibly. And finally, did any of those uh, patients that developed uh, a portal vein thrombosis did they require any operative uh, intervention or just uh, uh, pharmaceutical treatment? Uh, no, all the patients were treated with uh, chemical anticoagulation. Thank you.